I'm Brother Kristen Mary, and this is Brother Isaac. He's from the province of the Assumption in Australia. And today we're going to talk about tenebrae. So tenebrae is a kind of a funny word, isn't it? So what does it mean, and what is a tenebrae? So the word tenebrae itself literally means darkness or shadow, but it's usually used to refer to the liturgy that's celebrated in the evening towards the end of Holy Week and into the sacred Triduum. And it commemorates the various events that led up to the passion and death of Christ, particularly on Spy Wednesday, the betrayal of Judas, and then obviously the agony in the garden on Holy Thursday. So what's different from the tenebrae and the regular recitation of our liturgy of the hours that we do normally? So perhaps the, the greatest difference or the most central point in the tenebrae would be the tenebrae hearse or tenebrae triangle. And it's a big triangle set up in the middle of the church and there's 15 candles lit on that. And throughout the liturgy, the candles are slowly, gradually extinguished, gradually darkening the church, which sort of mirrors the Easter Vigil, where it all starts from one flame, one candle, and then grows to the, light the entire community. In the Tenebrae, the light starts in the entire community and gradually darkens until there's just the one flame representing Christ. Now, what does the structure of the Tenebrae look like? So, the Tenebrae itself is made up of a combination of the monastic offices of matins and lords, which together you have 14 psalms interspersed with nine readings. So after each of the psalms, one candle is extinguished, gradually darkening the church, and at the Benedictus, everything, all the lights in the church are extinguished except the one, Christ's candle. And then at the very end of the Benedictus, during the antiphon, that candle is hidden. It's never blown out, but it's just hidden. And then there is the famous antiphon, the Christus Factus Est, which is the verse in Scripture where Christ was made obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And in response to that, we all chant in a monotone, just a simple tone. We all chant Psalm 51, which is the great, Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. So in response to Christ's love, we ask for mercy. And then, at the end of that, there is my perhaps my favorite part of the whole tenebrae, the strepitus, which literally means commotion or earthquake or something. And it's nature itself convulsing at the death of Christ. And so there's this huge convulsion in the liturgy. And then that all stops in an instant as a candle is shown. The candle reappears, showing ultimately Christ is victorious over death. And it's then by the light of that last candle that the entire congregation leaves in silence. Thank you, Brother Isaac, and thank you for teaching us about the Tenebrae. Know that we're praying for you, and thank you so much for listening to us. Bye-bye.